Wait, what? What the fuck happened to the female Tauren's face? I think, I think I'm gonna be sick. Some YouTube should calm me down. Josh Fierstein here, so I've been issued a challenge to publicly prove that God exists. This is gonna be so great! So apparently Josh... First... Uh, Josh Furstein? Josh Frankenstein put out a video claiming that he can prove that evolution is false. Haven't ever heard that claim before. Josh Fierstein here, so I've been issued a challenge to publicly prove that God exists, and that atheism and evolution are illogical and just plain don't make sense, and without using a Bible, so here we go. <laughs> Wait, he's not gonna use the Bible? Oh my god, this, this video might not be as bad as I originally thought it would be. But let's really look at how logical evolution really is. I mean, imagine that you've never read a history book, and all of a sudden you're driving through South Dakota and you see a mountain with four big faces on it. Well, we know it's Mount Rushmore, but say you didn't. And say all of a sudden you see it, would you just assume that that was a product of evolution, that the mountain had just evolved that way? Or would you think that maybe that there had been an artist or a designer that had somehow carved those faces into that mountain? Yeah, I don't know what I was expecting. How much do you want to bet that this guy's idol is Ray Comfort? To have things made, you've got to have a maker. Uh -huh. You can't have a creation without a creator. Show me a building that didn't have a builder. Show me a painting that didn't have a painter. Because we know if the, if the can is made, there must be a maker. If it's designed, there must be a designer. Now, I know this may be news to a creationist like Mr. Josh here, but evolution? deals with things that are alive. And last I checked, mountains aren't alive. Even mountains with faces on them. Oh, and if you were thinking, I love this creationist classic, may I have some more? Because you know, you're a masochist or whatever. Well, you're in luck because he hits us with other great classics such as the earth is in the perfect spot. I mean, think about the Earth that we live in. Think about the fact that it's 8,000 miles in diameter. Think about the fact that it's 93 million miles from the sun. If it was any larger, well, the air would be far too dense and turn into water and cover the Earth. If it was any farther or closer to the sun, we would either freeze or we would burn to death. Think about the fact that it's tilted 23.5 degrees, which allows us seasons. Think about the fact that it's the right distance from the moon, that when it spins, that it's able to control the tides. Think about the fact that the atmosphere atmosphere is 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. I mean, even Stephen Hawking, the great physicist, had to admit that the universe and its laws of physics seem to be specifically designed for us. And of course, everyone's favorite, you can't get life from non-life. Another nail in the coffin of evolution? Well, this is just plain and simple. It's never been proven that life can come from non-life. End of story. You know, if you can't get life from non-life, then how on earth can you believe a story where a rib turned into a woman? Was I... Was I not supposed to ask that question? Allow you to nail the coffin shut on evolution, you say? More like allow you to nail the coffin shut on your credibility? <laughs> you know, maybe this wasn't his best video. Maybe I'm kind of being harsh on him. I mean, maybe you'll have better luck nailing the coffin shut with this video. I mean, second time's a charm, right? Dear Mr. Atheist, first of all, let me correct you. Because evolution is not a science, never has, and never will be. Why? Because it cannot fit within the parameters and parentheses of science for one simple reason. It was never observed. That's why it's not science. That's why it's called the theory of evolution. And yet, if we go back to science, the one thing that science demands, if you maybe you've heard of the, something called the law of thermodynamics, which means that chaos can never produce order.